how the magicians call upon jinn, how they invoke jinn. Because in our society we see people who claim to be Shaykh, Peer, Sufi Baba and all that stuff. But when you go to the reality, when you, go, when you get to the home truth, you find that those people are in, in, in reality black magicians and who are always involved in occult and mystical practices. As these methods lead to kufr and disbelief and polytheism and if any one of us commits any of these methods or ways he becomes a disbeliever the jinn and the magician they coordinate based on a deal the magician calls the chief jinn he calls upon him he praises him he commits all forms of disbelief and polytheism and then a deal is made between the chief jinn and the magician and the chief jinn sends the subordinate jinns to carry out the purposes of the black magic because in many of the cases i saw with my own eyes that when the jinn was asked to 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 leave the body he said that i can't i'm i'm i'm, I'm compelled because i'm forced by the magician and my chief black magic cannot be performed without the involvement of jinn jinn and magician both are involved in black magic if you remove jinn black magic can be performed so they have the certain ways and certain rituals and practices through which they coordinate with the chief jinn so i'm going to share with you those rituals and the methods they use to call the jinn the first method is called as al-iqsam in which the magician gets into a dark room and he swears in the name of the chief jinn he says oh chief jinn please come he praises him constantly and he wears filthy clothes and he gets into the impure state of the body so when he starts his rituals he lights up fire and in the fire he puts bad odor or good smell based on the subject based on their requirement for example he got the requirement to create differences and divisions between husband and wife in that case he puts bad order and if he wants to create unconditional love between husband and wife between two friends between two partners between two lovers based on the requirement he puts good smell or he burns incense sticks so after a while he praises the chief jinn he calls him again and again then a phantom appears before him in the form of a dog or a snake and he communicates to the jinn he dictates what to be done and what not to be done and in most of these cases he takes the sweaty garment of the person on whom the magic has to be done the patient or the victim he takes the sweaty garment he ties the knot on the sweaty garment and says this has to be done to this person this has to happen this has to happen and in most of these cases he hears a voice okay what do you want me to do your wish is my command and then the magician says that this has to be performed this has to be done this has to be taken care of so this is the first method now the second method which is called as a zabiha they use this method as a way of slaughtering the animal in the name of the chief jinn so they ask you or the person who visits the magician he tells the person to get an animal with certain specifications for example black crow or black sheep or black ram or black pigeon or an or an owl they specifically ask for black color because jinn like black color and they slaughter it in the name of the chief jinn and they ask you or the person who visits them to put the carcass at a place where people don't usually pass by because these are the places where jinn reside these are the homes of the jinn this is the second method now the third method which is called as a sufliya this is the worst form of disbelief in this method magician wears Quran on his on his on his foot and he walks into the toilet he sits in the toilet and he 
does all the incantations and the chanting and praising of the jinn and then he comes back to his room and then the jinn comes to him and talk to him this is the third method now the fourth method which is called as an-najasa in this the magician writes the quran with the menses discharge or the dirty fluids they use this blood to write the Quranic ayats and this is how they please the jinn and, the, and, and, and later the jinn come to them and talk to them and they carry out the task. The fifth method they use is called as al tankiz In this they anachromatize the words of the Holy Quran. For example, my name is uh, Abu Talha. So Talha, uh, the reverse of the word Talha is Ahlat Uba. Ahlat Uba. So, for example, I, ha I, I have to say Allah, then the magicians say Halala, anagrammatize, reverse. So, the magicians use this technique this way to read the Quran, and this is how the jinn gets pleased with them, and they come at their beck and call to execute the orders and the task. The sixth method they use is called as at tanjim in this, the magicians believe that gods descend from certain stars. So they wait for those stars to happen on a particular date, on a particular time, and they believe that these stars appear once in a year, and they wait for that time, and they get into water up to the waist or up to the neck, and they look at the star, and they praise the star, and they chant the praising of the, the star, and they believe that the gods descend from the star. But in reality, in Islam, we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created stars for beautifying sky and for navigation purpose. It has nothing to do with the fortune. And in fact, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said that if anyone gets into astrology and if anyone learns astrology, then he has learned a branch of magic. And if he gets more into that, then he has learned more magic. So one has to refrain from studying about the movement of stars and the calculation of um, fate and the fortune. And people even believe that if this star comes into uh, this circle, then uh, your, your baby will be uh, good and your baby will be bad. So people believe in stars and they believe that it all, it all happens uh, due to the stars. But stars are just a creation of Allah. Anyway, the seventh method, which is called as Al-Kafu, and this method is usually used to find the lost objects. For example, you lost gold items, so people reach, uh, reach out to these magicians, and they do this method of Al-Kafu to call jinn and to carry out the task of black magic. An eighth method, which is called as Al-Athar, in this, the magician asks you sweaty garment, and then he ties knot on that and he recites Surah Takathur in a very loud way. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحاكم التكاثر حتى ذرتم المخابر Then he goes down, he goes silent. And then he rises again. And then he gives a jerk to the handkerchief. And if the knots, the distance between the knots increases, then he says that you're affected with jinn. If it decreases, then he says that you, you've got you know, evil eye. So all the things happen with the coordination of jinn. And these are the eight methods they use uh, to call the jinn. And they have multiple methods. They have multiple me methods and they keep upgrading their methods. But the fundamentals of their ways and methods are these eight. And based on these eight, they keep in, uh, increasing and upgrading themselves. They have multiple methods to call jinn. And more the person is into disbelief and polytheism, jinns come at, the, at his beck and call. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't help us, and if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't take us in his refuge, then it's impossible to be away from these, from these evil creatures. My reference point is the book written by Sheikh Abdul Salam Bali, the sword against black magic and evil magicians and this is the best book on this subject
Some of the incidents are based on my personal experience I saw with my own eyes and experience because I used to go to every kind of magician and even those magicians would come to our house and we have experienced this in our uh, life. My whole purpose is to bust the black magic and let the people know the reality of the black magic and let the people safeguard themselves from the evil magicians and the black magic. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.